Hi. Hey, morning. This is cool. We just, just as you came in, we we realized that we sang together in a choir 12 years ago. Yeah, it's, it is a, such a small world. It really is. Yeah, in my, my time in, in, in Anuna in Ireland, we, we, we were cross paths. Yeah, how about that, world. man? Yeah, yeah, when I was, when I was like 19 years old, I was in a choir from Newfoundland called QVE, and, oh. and we flew over to Ireland for yeah. a contest, and we sang with you guys. Yeah. And I've always wanted to get to Newfoundland, I have to say. I've never, I haven't been there yet, but. Um, oh, it's, it's very pretty. It's gorgeous. It's, Absolutely. Really it's, rugged. It's coastline. like Ireland. It, that's it. But in Canada. That's why so many of us ended up there, yeah. I think. And know? that might be it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I should do a DNA test after this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the song we just heard, Name Checks, Nina Simone, uh, James Brown, John Lennon, Joni Mitchell, Woody Guthrie, B.B. King. I mean, I could keep on going on and on, but I noticed there were no contemporary singers mentioned in that song. Tell me about that decision. Um, that was a, that was a, that's a hard one. Um. There is, of course, contemporary examples. I think that I that I could give, and uh, but I don't know if that was. It was more. It was more drawing from the legacy. I think it. I think there's less contemporary examples nowadays than 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 that. Maybe from of artists from the the sixties and seventies and 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 onwards. Um, there's people speaking to power, especially in in pop music and rock music. Yeah, and rock music, right? in, in yeah. Po- yeah, in 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 popular music and in. in and oftentimes in kind of mainstream popular music, but um, uh, and I, I don't know if that's nowadays is more of a people are uncomfortable or, or don't or, or risk being um, risk that or people are ne- nearly intend that their music is apolitical in, in some way that it is completely void of of, of something that can be considered political. Um, yeah. But for me, I think music is political no matter what, no matter no matter what it's about. It, it that's not to say it's when, when we. <laughs> There's so many negative connotations when we talk about things being political, but if something con- if something concerns the experience of people, um, uh, it, it concerns some political dimension, you know, right. and, you know, um, and uh, yeah. So it was just kind of I think the hope for it was just kind of um, was 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 writing something that credited um, that credited a, a, a spirit of hopefulness and a, and, a, and a spirit of kind of 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 resistance and defiance against against difficult times and drawing from the legacy of people who had their own difficult times and 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 spoke about them and sang about them and 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 that's a legacy that can be drawn from and, and in in un, in uncertainty and, and times of uncertainty when there's kind of you know where do you start like where do you begin to 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 credit the difficulties of of um of kind of 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 very uncertain kind of uh, tumultuous times. Right. Where do you begin? Is it is it you know is it even worthwhile? And but like you know there is a starting point in in maybe in in that legacy as well. It's 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 challenging. I mean yeah. I mean I, I, I we were talking about this maybe even last Friday on the show that I said you know like if it seems like there's not a lot of protest music in rock and 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 pop and, and country and folk music. Like it's all it's, it's shifted to hip hop, which is doing some really do it, really yeah really remarkable work, but. Um, was this a new realization for you that you – is it an obligation, uh, the the idea to take your music and use it to speak to a particular political message? It's 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 not – it's not it's simply. Um, I think – and I'm I'm really resistant of, of even like it being referred to as a – or being considered – I'm sure people will, will think of it that way as a protest song or as this is protest music. To me, it's a song maybe about protest songs. But um, – and it's not even coming out of the feeling of obligation. A lot of the music, a lot of the music coming, is not as hopeful. This is Nina Cry Power is, is is a kind of looking at the difficult times from a hopeful angle. I can't say that all the songs are are uh, carry that hopefulness. And mm. um, they maybe come from a place of hope or a place of uh, love and joy, but they 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 aren't. <laughs> they're not as yeah. uh, they're not as 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 uh, hopeful sounding. The I think for for me it, it's I, I was always a firm believer in in writing music that you you wish people wrote and mm-hmm. and when you have when you have um, influences and people artists that you look up to and respect and from and most of my growing up I, I got into blues music very very early and jazz music and, and soul music then um, I think I was I'm a firm believer in, in kind of in Try, trying to respect the legacy of the, of the work that that has informed your inf- informed your musical tastes and and um, kind of writing the music that you wish people were writing yeah. nowadays, you know. 
then that's maybe part of the intention. I love that line, though. I'm, you know, I'm a firm believer in writing the music you wish other people were writing. Yeah, that's totally. Something really great about totally. There's no yeah. point in complaining about, you know, like <laughs> sitting around going, why isn't there X, Y, aren't people writing X, Y, Z? Right. Um, yeah, do it, do it. You know? uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with uh, Hosier about his new EP, Nina Cry Power. So I want to go away from uh, kind of the abstract of these things and, and go into actual action here. So last month, you performed in solidarity with survivors of abuse in the Catholic Church at a protest in Dublin during Pope Francis' visit to the city. Mm-hmm. So why was it important for you to be there at that? Um, well, I think, I mean, like solidarity costs nothing. Um, I think in, 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 that, in, in that example... Uh, you know, we had we had something like twenty two hours of 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 of, of state broadcasting, uh, following following that particular visit. Um, we have a very particular we have a very very particular um, unique sort of uh, history and and the legacy of the church and and the actions of its of its kind of of the institutionalized Roman Catholic Church, and um, it has a has a, it has a particular legacy and a particular history with people. Uh, of Ireland and and with regards its treatment, obviously of, of of women in particular with with the laundries, uh, mother and baby homes, and its and its treatment of of you know children and 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 kids in industrial schools as well too. It was kind of given um, very little oversight uh, in, with regards to education and health right. for a long long time. Right. Um, that you know. There, there is a kind of a there's a, a legacy there, and there's, there's that wasn't really going to be wasn't going to be discussed. I don't think in, in that visit, and certainly wasn't really covered uh, um, sat- in a satisfactory way. But uh, for me, it was it was just it was just standing in solidarity. Colm O'Gorman, who organised that, he's the head of Amnesty International in Ireland. He kind of he kind of put it best. Um, I think when he, when he he said like, what what do we talk about? As Christians, when we talk about caring for one another, and um, what are we ta- what, what are we talking about when we're talking about loving one another and, and caring for one another? And I, I think that stands or that starts with uh, standing up and, and acknowledging that suffering and acknowledging that hurt and um, of of the survivors of that legacy. And there's a lot of people who didn't survive that legacy, and um, those stories, a lot of them won't be told. Um, what we do know is 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 uh, you know. I think, you know, what do we talk about when we talk about caring for, for one another? That begins with acknowledging that and uh, and uh, and kind of and and standing in solidarity with them. And and and, and for me, it, that was an, an, an act of compassion and an act of a truth. It was no, it was a stand for truth, as, as they called it. But well, for you, I mean, like there's a when I was I have so many friends in Ireland and I spent so much time there that when I was so when when the, the, when the Pope was visiting, I was kind of you know, reading Reddit and I was reading the Irish Times and I was, I was trying to keep up on it as much as I could. You were mentioned a lot. Like right. there was a lot, you were, you were a, sort of the source of the lot, a lot of the headlines, like Ho- Hosier will be performing at this. Just personally, mm-hmm. just personally, mm-hmm. what's that like to be sort of at the center of it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, um, I mean, for, for the headlines and stuff, yeah, you, you maybe, that's, that draws, dra- draws a name. What breaks my heart is that um, what what isn't what isn't at the center of it is uh, a a a kind of a systematic cover up of of uh, and these are the survivors of of such abuses and these are you know really what should be at the center of it is 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 the kind of the the human suffering that people have to live with um, now and moving into the future and. Right. and um, so for me, it's it's kind of I I I didn't want to I was kind of reluctant to to talk all too much about it and 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 speak because there's nothing really I can I can I can offer other than for me that it was it's just trying to be there in in, in solidarity. So it is a weird feeling, and I I don't yeah. think I should be at the cent- center you know of that discussion. I think there's more far more important stuff going on. Oh, there's, uh, these are, I should point out these are obviously things we're trying to reconcile with here in Canada as yeah. well, and we have we have a long way to go. Um, Back to the kind of the reason that you're here at the center is is this massive fame and this massive success. That's not I don't want to say, I don't believe there's actually such a thing as anything happening overnight because it just seems that way to to other people. But it just did seem like the take me to church thing happened, really amazingly. Like just out of nowhere, at least here in Canada, you mm-hmm. were all over the radio. Yeah. You were getting a lot of attention. Yeah. 
going from being relatively anonymous to that, mm -hmm. give me an idea of, A, either tell me when you realized, oh, my God, this thing is getting a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. or tell me what it's like to be at the, at the kind of the center of it. Um, I, I can't, I can't, I would, it was such a blur um, for a long, long time. I think I was more at the, I was so green at the time. I was a I was a college dropout essentially. As I mean how I kind of characterize it myself. Yeah. I I left college um and kind of concentrated on you know writing music and demoing music and kind of trying to get a handle on some way of producing a sound or at least starting or cultivating something that I that I wanted to achieve. Um and then the first the first song I released yeah, like it was, it was we with my label Ruby Works in Ireland. We had it as a free download for like a month. Oh, that was take me to church. That, that was take me to church. Was, you could download for free on Bandcamp, I think, for about a month. And then things started picking up. I think it was like um, it started being played in a radio station, like Alabama Mountain Radio or something. Was like the first station that I remember it picking up and going like, well, that's odd. Like that's. That's really interesting, and then you know, I think the the video, the video got into a lot of people's hearts and minds, and then it started being shazammed like crazy. And then within a very short space of time, they were lining us up for TV shows, and I was so, in a lot of ways, I feel like I was so so unprepared for that. Mm -hmm. There was no the cart was very. It felt like they, they were, we were kind of chasing. The cart was sometimes it felt like I was my cart was before the horse, and I was kind of you know catching up with. The song in a lot of ways, and mm -hmm. um, so for the most part, it took it took me a while to to even process that because it was it was it was all panic stations for for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. personally, not that I not that I expressed it at the time or, or anything, but um, it was crazy. I don't know when I don't know when I kind of there was a few moments of real of um, uh, uh, there's a few moments of maybe realization where you're going, oh, holy crap! That the music has somehow made its way into 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 people's hearts and minds, and this isn't just a this isn't just a uh, you know I, I don't know. There's like a flash in the pan, yeah, or it's not. Yeah, totally, I, I understand. Yeah, kind of I love the very Irish reaction to having a massive worldwide number one, which is that's odd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Jeez, boy, that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a bit odd, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we can we play mad. something from the new EP? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm singing like a bird bird now The birds on the boat That's beautiful. That's a bit of the song Shrike from Hosier's new release, the Nina Cried Power EP. You feeling any pressure to follow up that massive success? Um, I'm sure people are asking you. Of, co of course, I think there was there was a few choices I could I could have made there on like because that was a commercial success. And I suppose that when I say, as we were joking about, oh that's that's odd. Uh, this song about about ch like church and and uh, and then as uh, this kind of elaborate metaphor for like you know. Love making and and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we at the time we didn't think I didn't think it would it would kick off. I thought it would be like an indie like an indie thing, but um, for me it was a decision a decision of kind of you can kind of chase that commercial success and in, in or in 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 the in the in what you hear in the top five on the radios and uh, all the writing rooms etc that, that go with it. But I think the first time round, um, my intention was to create something that felt natural to me was something that I, I wanted to hear written and wanted to hear, would like to hear on radio and and uh, was thrilled that, that that song came through. Not that I was expecting that to happen. The same time around on this time, yes, there is that pressure. But for me, I think the, the pressure is all, is all self, is all, um, you know, it hasn't been from management and label, thank God. I have to say they've been super cool and giving me space and time. Yeah. But of course, you you just you don't want to let down your own your own work. So I, I wanted to take my time with it, and and I kind of approached the the construction of the music in a in a, in a similar way, which was kind of living alone for a while and and just and just 
you know, working on arranging ideas. It's a beautiful record. Thank you. It really is. It's a really lovely EP. Thank you, man. There's there's more to more to come. It's a it's a it, for for me it's tip of the iceberg. I have to say, um, it's nice to just nice to get out there and air some tunes. But we'll have another track out in a few weeks and um, the album early next year. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm proud of the work. I have to say, but yeah. But this this EP is is tip of the iceberg. Come back another time now and we'll sing a song and we'll... I would love to. Maybe we'll rehash some old... Yeah, some old and Una. Some was, old, yeah, yeah. Some old uh, choir. It choir was, favorite. It was your birthday you were, you were saying. It was my that. 19th birthday I spent in Ireland, which I know is 18 there, but 19 here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I... It was a big deal. I'm not surprised I don't remember it too well. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. But we had a good time. You did it right. Nice to see you yeah, again. Yeah, you too.